Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on solving quadratics in standard form with something called the quadratic formula. So if you notice in standard form, we always have our values of a, b, and c, the coefficients and our constant. The quadratic formula is essentially a formula that allows us to plug in the values of a, b, and c, and after we do all of the math, we end up with the zeros of the function. So grab your notes and let's get started. The first step is we need to go into the standard form and establish the values of a, b, and c. For this quadratic, the value of a is 4, the value of b is 6, and the value of c is negative 4. Once you have your values of a, b, and c, all you're going to do is plug them into the formula. a for a, b for b, and c for c. x equals negative b, so again, I'm plugging in 6 for b, plus or minus the square root, and I put a long square root in there, of b squared. So in this case, again, b is 6, minus 4 times the value of a, times the value of c, all divided by 2 times a. So again, in the quadratic formula, anywhere we saw a, we plugged in our 4s. Anywhere we saw b, we plugged in our 6. And everywhere we saw c, we plugged in our negative 4. Now all that's left is simplifying the expression. So let's go in and simplify some of this. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared here would be 36 minus, now 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. All over 2 times 4, which is 8. Now again, I do want to work from inside out, so I'm going to focus on simplifying what's in the radical here, the square root. So x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus negative 64 is 100 all divided by 8. And now we can simplify even further to x equals negative 6 plus or minus 10 over 8. Now from here we can set up two equations to finish simplifying. In one of our equations we'll focus on adding 10 and in the other equation we'll focus on subtracting 10. Okay, so our first equation is x equals negative 6 plus 10 divided by 8. And our second equation is x equals negative 6 minus 10 divided by 8. Okay, so negative 6 plus 10, that's 4, and 4 divided by 8, well, that's 1 half. So if our math is correct here, one of our zeros, one of our solutions here is 1 half. In the other one, we have x equals negative 16 divided by 8, which means x equals negative 2. So we'll have to see if negative 2 is also a solution. Unsurprisingly, step 4 is to check both solutions in the original function in standard form. Fortunately, both 1 half and negative 2 were solutions here. So we now know that this quadratic function has two real zeros. They are 1 half 0 and negative 2 0. Let's take a look at example 2. Example 2. We're going to start off the same way by identifying the values of a, b, and c. For this example, a is 1, b is negative 10, and c is negative 39. Now it's time to bring in the quadratic formula and plug in the values of a, b, and c. Go ahead and try that on your own now. You should have x equals negative negative 10. Again, there's two negatives happening here. Plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 39 all over 2 times 1. If this is what you have, let's go ahead and continue simplifying. We have x equals 
negative negative 10 becomes positive 10, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared is 100, minus 4 times 1 is 4, times negative 39 is negative 156. You might need to grab a calculator for that one. All over 2 times 1 is just 2. Let's continue simplifying what's inside of our square root. So x equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus negative 156 is 256 all over 2. 256, that is a perfect square. The square root of 256 is 16. So now we have 10 plus or minus 16 all divided by 2. Now from here, we can set up our two equations. One is going to be the x value when I add 10 and 16, and the other is the x value when I subtract 10 and 16. So here we go. One of my solutions will happen when I add 10 plus 16 and then divide by 2. The other will happen when I subtract 10 and 16 and then divide by 2. 10 plus 16 is 26, and 26 divided by 2 gives us a possible solution of x equals 13. 10 minus 16 is negative 6, and negative 6 divided by 2 gives us a possible solution of negative 3. Now, how can we know for sure? We have to check both of these in the original standard form function. Fortunately for us, both of these are solutions and make the equation true. Therefore, we can say that this quadratic has two real zeros, and they are 13, 0 and negative 3, 0. Let's go on to our final example. Once again, we're going to start off by finding the values of a, b, and c. For this example, the value of a is 12, the value of b is negative 10, and the value of c is 3. You know what time it is. Time to plug all of this into the quadratic formula. Go ahead and try doing that now. You should have x equals negative negative 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared minus 4 times 12 times 3 all over 2 times 12. Let's go in and simplify. Negative negative 10 just becomes positive 10 plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared is 100 minus, okay, 4 times 12 is 48, 48 times 3, that's 144. Again, you might need to grab a calculator for that math. All over 2 times 12, which is 24. Now we're going to continue to simplify what's underneath our square root sign. x equals 10 plus or minus the square root of 100 minus 144 is negative 44, all divided by 24. Now we can go in and simplify our square root, except, hold on here. Can I take the square root of negative 44? Not currently in Algebra 1. Later on in Algebra 2, you'll find out something about that. But since we cannot take the square root of negative 44, we're going to say this quadratic has no real solutions, meaning this parabola is not currently crossing the x-axis at all. And the nice part is, that means our work for this one is done. And that's it for today's lesson. I will see you next time.